and notably, La Nina will increase the likelihood of a more active hurricane season in the Atlantic, with the potential for more and stronger hurricanes. Hey everybody, welcome back to Starkey Forms. So not to wear you out on knowledge or anything, but I was doing a little bit more research as to why they are predicting the 2025 hurricane season is going to be so bad. So bad, in fact, that right now in Louisiana, the average homeowner's insurance is going to go from $10,000 to $13,000 a year. Folks, that's a three thousand dollar increase in insurance for people living in louisiana now that's a huge complicate things every few years our planet experiences el nino and la nina events two opposite ends of a scale that are part of the el nino southern oscillation or enso for short evidence of the enso goes back tens of thousands of years and may have even played a role in destabilizing some of the world's great ancient civilizations one of the five strongest El Nino events ever recorded has finally come to an end as of June 2024. After months of record high ocean temperatures, unprecedented heat stress on coral reefs, drought in the Amazon rainforest, and extreme rainfall with dangerous consequences for North America. With La Nina predicted to begin late 2024 or early 2025, what changes can we expect globally and locally? I want to know what I've realized. The climate scientists don't know what they're talking about. Because if you're going to tell me that everything we experienced last year across the world in 2024 where the weather was concerned was El Nino, <laughs> then how can it be climate change also? Seriously. Like, they're just speaking out of both sides of their mouth, folks. Let's be honest, weather modification, geoengineering is really doing a number on our world. You add in natural weather patterns and cycles, which are not so natural anymore. This is my biggest concern. They quit spraying. They quit jacking with the weather. What happens? Are we all going to be living on a train trying to beat the freeze? Are we all going to be living at 120 degree, 20 degrees Fahrenheit and everybody's baking? I think at this point, I have to hang on to what I know the Bible tells me, that there will be seasons and that there will be day and night until Jesus returns. So I have to trust that the Lord is going to provide a way for me to continue growing food and survive whatever weather, whatever is coming. And I think a lot of people don't know, but the Bible is basically an agricultural book. It is. And the book that I recently wrote, Growing Under a Poison Sky, is going to teach you how to grow the way God intended you to grow food because there is a way to grow that follows the Bible. And if you do it God's way, then what you see is a bigger produce and production and more nutrients and healthier soil. Because folks, I said this earlier and I really mean it. Before they ever started jacking with the weather, the first thing they did was teach people how to destroy the earth, how to just Take away everything that the Lord put there to protect your food. You destroyed it. And then when they started dumping all these toxins from the sky to the soil, there was nothing there to mitigate the damage. But you can fix that just like everything else. I mean, have you guys not realized that? How amazing God is. The Holy Spirit is restoration. That's what he does. He restores to you. Like we are believing that the Lord is going to restore to us what Satan stole from us when he got us demonetized on Facebook. That money is going to be replaced. If you'd like to be part of that, if you look in top of comments, four different ways you can give to this channel to help us to continue to do this. Because my concern is that people are not waking up quick enough. We know the weather patterns for 2025 are going to be 
off the chain. He's in to be a destructive season. Last year, we had three storms that were particularly destructive and retired from the list. Barrel, uh, Helene, and Milton. This year, it's really tough to say which storm will be the one that is the one we are all talking about for a while. But I do think we will have at least one of those again for this season. So those are the names on the list. Here is a look right now at water temperature anomalies. And what you can see going on is that we do have in the tropics some areas of extremes. We have very warm water, almost El Nino-like, but not quite, uh, centered just to the west of Ecuador. Then we have much cooler water than average over the equator in the Central Pacific, and then warmer in the Western Pacific, but much cooler than average between uh, Vietnam and the Philippines. On the Atlantic side, the Atlantic is still fairly warm with respect to average, but the Eastern Atlantic is quite a bit cooler than it was this time of year. Remember, these are just the anomalies. This doesn't mean the water is hot everywhere or cold everywhere. This is where we stand with respect to a 30-year average. So we like to look at these patterns because it helps us determine uh, where we may have hot beds for tropical development once again. We know that. The warnings are there. Nature is trying to tell you. Your spirit inside of you is trying to tell you, and the few decent weather people, they're trying to tell you, this is not normal. And that 2025 is going to be worse than expected, especially where hurricanes come from. Living in the South, we were taught a lot about hurricane formation. One thing we, we were taught was that when the oceans are hotter, when the Gulf of America is hotter, well, then the storms are larger because they feed off that warm water. It's also what contributes to algae blooms and, and stuff like that, right? So we have to look at, yeah, we got snow this year, totally unexpected, way more than we've ever seen at one time ever in my 50 years of living in the state. However, it was warmer than normal. So I want you guys to just be prepared. Go ahead, you guys, we're at the beginning of April. You have plenty of time to start picking up a few extra cans of food. Um, you can even use your canning jars that are not in use right now. You can put water in them, boil the water first, and then pour them in a clean jar, and you can seal the lids. Put them up on a shelf like you would food. And there's your purified water for an emergency. That's a free tip. Love you guys so much. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you're hearing. This is the place to share, folks.